So, um, with that, I will go ahead and introduce our presenter, who is Eric Feynman. Eric has 20 years of experience working in various technology walls in Los Angeles. He began in Los Angeles area, he began his career during the original dot com boom, building e commerce web applications. Eric has since worked in senior technology leadership positions at several high growth technology companies in Los Angeles. He brought, he brought his experience to co-founding his own startup company, Novella, where he currently serves as CEO. Eric is originally from Hawaii and attended the University of Hawaii, Manoa. He lives in the door with his wife and kids. Please welcome Eric. Thank you for the warm welcome. I want to make sure. Give me a second to switch back. All right. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. Um, and and it was nice to see that there's a there's a group here promoting tech in the San Gabriel Valley. I have lived here for a long time since 1998. So I moved here in the 20th century. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I came to the LA area to pursue uh, a, map, a, a PhD in history. So uh, I started going to school. I, when I was in that program, I realized that a lot of the other students have a passion for history, for the content that I just didn't have as much of. And so when I was trying to figure out what to do with my life, uh, and I still finished my master's degree in history, um, I, uh, I fell into a, a software testing role at a company here in Pasadena. Um, and I just, I absolutely loved it. So ever since then, I've been in tech, uh, in software engineering or uh, software quality assurance in that area. Um, I, and then I also went on to do a computer science degree after that and been an MBA. So it's three master's degrees. Yes. Um, worked at a company called Green Dot in Monrovia, if you guys know that, or moved to yeah. Pasadena. I was there about five years before the IPO, got to grow with the company. So that was great. Uh, great for my career as well. Uh, and then I went on to work in Santa Monica at a company called Cornerstone On Demand. Uh, Cornerstone is a human capital management software um, public company now. that actually went private since I've, I've left. Not be, nothing to do with me. <laughs> and, um, and so it was at the end of my tenure at Cornerstone where I was kind of thinking, what am I, what do I want to do next? I, I, I decided I was going to leave. Um, and I uh, was trying to figure that out, started talking seriously with a couple of other friends uh, about, you know, potentially starting a company. What would that look like? And, uh, and so this led to that, and, and here we are. Um, so Novella is the company we started. Novella is, we are currently an early stage tech company, and we exist to ensure that everyone's loved ones, every family in the world, their loved ones are never forgotten. Um, so tonight, I was going to talk about a couple of things. First is I'm going to talk about what Novella is, what we're trying to do and accomplish. Uh, and then we're going to, I'm going to talk about our journey. So, so from hearing the intros, it's, I can definitely tell some of you have much more experience as an entrepreneur than me. This is my first time. Um, but uh, hopefully some of the information is still useful and valuable to you and interesting. So uh, the what we're trying to do. Can you share your screen. And oh, is it not shared now? Stream audience. Oh, I didn't realize that. Hold on. All right. All right. Great. Great. <clears throat> Right. All right. Um, so the problem that we're trying to solve at Novella is, is pretty personal to me. So my mom passed away in 2013. Uh, it's actually January 2013. So it's, it's right about 10 years uh, with another week or so. And uh, at the time, my kids, at, at the time now, they're like this tall. But at that time, they were, they were very young, right? They uh, my daughter was four. All she knew of her grandmother was her grandmother was someone in a wheelchair, very sick, couldn't play with me. Um, she didn't know the person that I knew as my mom. 
And so one of the things that hurt the most that I didn't really expect, because it's the first time I went through this as a parent, um, was that my kids would never know their grandmother. They would never be able to experience her, right? So we had taken lots of pictures and, and we had some videos with my mom, but it turned out that very few of those mattered because they didn't tell the whole story of who she was. Um, and I realized through this experience, it's difficult and time consuming to try to get there, to try to get enough the right stuff to figure that out. So, hold on this little zoom window, I think it's a little bit there. There you go. There we go. Um, so, we and Novella came up with a solution for this. So, our solution makes the process of capturing the essence of who a person is simple enough for everyone to be able to do it. So we have three key ingredients. The first is engage. So this includes, uh, we believe that uh, you need to include family and friends in the process of telling your life story. Um, these are the people that know you the best and benefit the most from those stories. And the second is guide. So you have to get the right thing. Um, this is where a lot of people fail. Uh, you don't, they don't know how to capture the essence of the person. So you can imagine if you told someone, hey, go look at grandma's Facebook timeline. That's who she was. Uh, that wouldn't really make sense, right? There might be a lot of content, but it might not be the right content. Our solution guides them to capture the right things, the things that matter. And then we capture stories on video. So today, video is the best and most widely available medium to understand or know someone, right? Aside from being there in person. Um, this will change as, as we move forward, right? So when, when VR is uh, more widely available, for example, um, this will change. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. Okay, so uh, how does our solution work? So you start by creating one or more questions to send to your loved one. Uh, you can select a question from our what we call our question idea bank, or you can write your own. Um, the questions that come from our idea bank uh, are suggested based on what we know about you and your family. Um, and then there's what you do with those questions is you record, you record an answer uh, to the question. So there's two choices here. The, the primary option is using the Novella app. So your loved one uses the app to record an uh, answer to the question or has another family member help them. Uh, and then the app will coach them on how to get the best audio, video, and lighting for their situation. An alternative option is a professional interview. Uh, and by the way, the, the mobile app is, this is in early, early beta right now. So in terms of the recording features of the app, and I'll get more into that later. Um, but the, the professional interview option is something that we have been doing and is available today. So this option is useful for people that maybe are not comfortable with technology, comfortable with using a app or to record uh, themselves, um, or if they want the benefit of a professional studio quality video. Uh, we, so in this option, we actually set up cameras, lighting, and audio, and conduct an interview. So the person that is being interviewed, of course, usually is like the first time ever seeing this type of thing, uh, and they, they feel very special. It's, it's an experience for them. Um, afterwards, we then edit and uh, video following a standardized process and then deliver the final video on our platform. So... Third is share, and this you can really do anytime in this process, but uh, you can invite other family members to participate in, in asking questions for either the interview or to be answered through the mobile app. Uh, and our app strongly encourages uh, the engagement of others in this process. And then finally, the, uh, all recordings are securely and privately available on our platform. So um, let me talk a little bit about uh, why the, um, what the big picture is. So, so what I just described is kind of, it, you know, I'm sure it makes sense. It's pretty straightforward. Um, we have a lot of things on a roadmap to do, of course, a lot of, a lot of features to implement, uh, but uh, there's a larger picture. So let me talk about two things in particular uh, that I think are, uh, set the stage for where we're going with Novella. Uh, the first is, is uncertainty. So uh, I'll tell you that when we started the company in 2021, uh, 
between now and then, we've seen many other companies pop up doing a similar thing as us. Uh, some of them, most of them had actually started a little bit before us. And, um, but all were founded during the pandemic. Right. So I think that, you know, people always create connection and have a need for connection and relationship with other people. And uh, that happens, especially in times of loss, like if there's a death in the family, that that, height, that need is heightened. And, and it's also needed during times of uncertainty. The last three years have seen lots of uncertainty in the world, right? Um, and especially the pandemic, I don't think there was no one... Most people, almost everybody alive has never seen anything like that before. Um, so we believe that people are more open to the idea of capturing their loved ones' life stories because of this uncertainty. It's not, it's not a coincidence that all companies that are like us have, have been started during the pandemic. The second is uh, what's been happening in technology. So I think you'd agree technology has been rapidly improving our ability and our descendants' ability to understand and know the past. For our descendants, way more than, than us, of course. Mm -hmm. So uh, once upon a time, the only way to know people from the past was through uh, fragmented records, like or oral histories, diaries, uh, government records. Um, now, if you were a president or if you were famous enough to have a 60 minutes interview of, of your life, then different story, right? People could know much more about you. Um, this is the first time in history we're really seeing this, where you can really know a lot more about the average person uh, everywhere. So technology is democratizing how we know the past. Um, some examples of that, DNA tests, for a hundred bucks now, you can you can know a lot of information about, about your past. Uh, my mom was adopted, so when I saw, she was never alive for all this stuff, right? But uh, I did a 23andMe test a while back, and I was shocked, stunned when I saw uh, that they added a feature where they show you your, your genetic relatives. And there was this whole side of the family I did not know existed, biological relatives. And some were really close. They must have been either like an uncle or a half brother or something like that at first. Um, and interesting, interestingly enough, I actually might have recognized one of the names. So, so sometimes you learn things there too. Um, easy, high quality video recording. Uh, what I can do with them with my iPhone 14 Pro Max is I just would never have dreamed of 10 years ago. You can, this is, this is an amazing piece of uh, equipment and, and with all the software capabilities that are there, um, you can do a lot, way more than you could with, with some professional uh, equipment not too long ago. Uh, cheap digital just digital storage is really uh, underpinning a lot of this, right? You you have you record a lot of video, higher higher quality. It eats you know eats up enormous storage space. And uh, though it's not widely available yet, virtual reality. When I say not widely available, I mean you can buy an Oculus, but uh, it's not something that your average person is just going to put on and and want to wear all the time, right? And, and live in a virtual world. We're not quite there yet. Um, but that will be another leap in better knowing the past. So when you combine that with metaverse and with the the, uh, the lowering cost of intelligence in the form of AI, um, you can imagine, you know, in the future, you would be able to see your ancestor in a 3D world. You'd be able to visit them. You'd be able to sit down, listen to one of their stories. You could walk around them and look at them as they're telling a story. And you might be able to be able to uh, interact with them, or I guess it's some semblance of them in the metaverse. So I think all this leads us that, to believe, to think that uh, in the future, generations will be able to know us much better uh, than we have been able to know uh, previous generations. So with the uncertainty and the advances in technology, along with that lowering cost, we think that we're in the right place at the right time with Novella. Uh, there's a huge opportunity here to help families and uh, every family, like literally in the world, um, and to help them uh, hear each other's stories, have people feel closer, build closer connections. By the way, sharing your story with somebody helps mental health, right? Because you, uh, when you're vulnerable with someone and we share with somebody and you know each other's stories, that builds connection, builds relationship. 
Um, so we believe that one day it's going to be commonplace for everyone to be able to record and remember their loved ones and to function similarly to what I'm talking about here. So with all these improvements, I think we'll be able to capture families, uh, family members in a way that future generations will more fully experience them. It'll be a lot better than what you can get on video today. Um, and I think for us over time and with, and with investments uh, in machine learning, we'll be able to better identify what to capture. So, um, you know, if we want to capture, uh, we'll be able to identify what memory or what story has not been recorded and then be able to suggest that to people or to report to capture that to create a more fuller picture of someone's life. Um, it's unfortunate that it's this is coming kind of late, uh, or I feel like that because, you know, for my mom, of course, in my, my situation, uh, it's not too late for some others. And um, we've actually had in our, in our work so far in the filming of professional interviews, we've had it happen multiple times that somebody has passed away before we film them. Um, and we've even done it on the other side where we, we filmed at essentially the funeral. So um, for the next generation, then we believe there's a pretty good chance as this technology and as the culture starts accepting that this is something that people generally do and, and uh, uh, is, uh, is a good thing to do. Um, so anyway, so this is why Nobel exists. So we want to make this future real. Uh, so I'm going to pause at this point because, let's see, because I want to answer some questions before I go on to the next part and talking about our journey so far in more detail. It was, yes. it was a little bit of a silly. The, the last slide you had with that device, I, has anybody in the room had a good experience? <laughs> I mean, you have. I can remember telling my dad on the top of the uh, Empire State Building to put the dime in and turn the thing. Oh, and right. even still, yeah. that thing, <laughs> right? And still it was like, really, really mental. <laughs> anyway. I remember to choose another illustration for that in the future. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an interesting thing because it does, it, it definitely has a time associated with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw some on the, uh, and had these here this last weekend. Um, Anyway, it's, it's I just give them a credit card slot. In. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you, um, I have a relative who started doing story work. Mm -hmm. And again, that this would they give you a number of prompts and then you write a story associated with those prompts. And so my like, yeah, Andy is telling stories. Eventually she got tired and so she stopped doing it. So what mm -hmm. happened after about four good essays? No more, even though every week he gets good prompts. Um, mm -hmm. But that's one of those things that tried to get there in a very low tech in a lot of ways. Yeah, StoryWorth is, I mean, we're very familiar with that because uh, they are probably, they're not uh, quite like, you know, we're doing video. So that when I when I describe other companies that are most like us, they're all either doing video, one of them is doing audio, mm -hmm. um, but they're doing professional interviews with audio. And uh, the start work is similar in that, yeah, they're, they're trying to accomplish the same goal. Um, and for those of you that don't know story worth, it's it, basically you, you sign up for this and for a year, they'll email whatever loved one you, you know, you want to give this to a question. They answer the question. Uh, and then after a year, they'll go and they'll print a book and it's a nice book and you get this book. And um, I've heard stories. We actually heard stories from some of our customers that talk about like my grandfather carries this book around and shows it to everybody. Um, and so it's a, it's a nice thing, but yeah. Yeah, writing a book at that moment, at that time, you yeah. left everybody in the room. That's maybe a tall order. Yeah, this, what the way we see this ultimately working. Um, and, and so again, the, the professional interview is going to be a point in time, right? And there's a bunch of questions, two hours. Um, there's a lot of stuff that gets answered and recorded. But the way that we see it working in the future is this constant engagement. So um, throughout your life, you are, are going to have the opportunity to uh, use Nobella and we're going to we're going to encourage it. You know, we're going to know, uh, you know, so, for example, if you, you know, you report an answer that talks about great family vacation, we're going to be able to then suggest uh, someone else to tell their story about that. Right. And so the, 
we end up, the plants end up getting the family involved. So whereas Starworth is this kind of a one-time deal for one person, we're really trying to engage the, the whole family and, and friends in this process. Um, the bad Thanksgiving. <laughs> Another question. Uh, can they they can hear the questions on the on the yeah, screen? Yeah. All right. So I'm actually also a doctor, and uh, a couple of years ago I went to meet my biological mom for the first time and ended up getting married, right? And uh the wedding gift was a recipe book, like an old school family recipe book, right? For my generation, it doesn't exist. You don't have any family recipes, you just Google what you want to do, right? But you always, everybody in this room understands like that family recipe, like it never tastes as good as grandma's rice and beans or whatever. And Jeannie's, you know, pumpkin cheesecake, right? Yeah. And those, I, I'm just seeing like totally a video uh, of, you know, watching the source make that recipe um, because, you know, that's, like I, that book, I could just try to envision my biological grandma making her famous pickles, and I, like, I can't get there. Right, mm -hmm. so that would be such a cool thing uh, for a video with that kind of connection, where you can almost you can taste the flavor. Now. I mean, imagine if uh, you know, there's there's a lot of families now that have, I think it's called the Echo Show. Yeah, these types of devices in their kitchen, right? So we could actually use that. To do the recording, yeah. Or even, uh, you know, if if there's another family that has it, we can prompt that family. We can pop up something that says, "Hey, Grandma just recorded this recipe. Do you want to see it? Maybe you want to make it." Yeah, nobody can record in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of what you were saying, like you record it over time, and it reminds you of seeing people that have done that picture of themselves in the same spot every day for for their child for years and years and years. And, but this would be much more of a story. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've toyed with a lot of ideas, including doing some kind of uh, package for professional interviews or something along that vein. You know, on an mm -hmm. ongoing basis. Yeah. Right. So you can help people capture those those uh well, right. those stories as well. Simple, kind of. You know, like, and, and I think the younger generation are completely used to having. Well, they be real. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Kids do be real, and that's like like if you were to do that, which you know is this app where it prompts you right now. You need to take a picture of yourself, and it takes a picture of you and what you're looking at. And the whole concept is that you're not curating, and you know, I think people it's so that. <laughs> but that would work into something like that, maybe a little bit longer, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. I've got a technical question. I don't want sure. a whole lot of technical questions. Well, later. Go it out. Go ahead. But, um, you know, I was looking at your progression of, you know, from the start all the way up to the finished product. Mm -hmm. So, your finished product is that something that you own, or is that something that the family owns? So, from a obviously, you, you need to store some type of media, mm -hmm. um, or is that something? Is this like a, a, a like a right to use type it's, situation, or is it a do they, do they actually own the video of the group? They they own the video. Okay, so yeah, so it's there. When, it, when it's completed, they could actually let's say download it. It's not just completely within your system. Yeah, so uh, those professional interviews, yeah, we'll we'll supply okay. the the edited video. We, we we will not give them everything, not all the edited, and that's because there may be things in there that we just don't right. re, uh, re match or hit our professional right. level right. of, um, you know, that we want to hit. But yeah, it's theirs. All right, great. Yeah. Is there like a legal question? Not <laughs> 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 is the platform itself uh, if you if you own the uh, content finished content is it when you say both on the platform mm -hmm. is, it, is that an open platform or same kind of same question is, is my video or whatever still is something I can download and get with me mm -hmm. or <laughs> your system is it stored by five? Is it stored for example? Yeah, yeah. Well, 
I don't know about that situation. That's kind of far down the road to, to think about. I think um, they're phasing out the photo center. You have to, you can send it to Shutterfly. So we have, we, we, the user owns it, it's hosted on the platform. Yeah, it it's it's so not it's not open. So yeah, so you have. Eric, control. if you could repeat the question because oh, they can't hear. A little bit, just repeat the question for the audience. Sure. So, so the question is is whether whether Novella is an open platform. Can anyone go and look at this stuff or not? Um, so we've so right now it's it's the idea is that it's private, right? So if you uh, what we what you're creating when you actually go in and sign up for an account there is what we call a novella community. Um, and then you have control over who gets in there and who doesn't. And then you also have some control over who sees what within that community. Um, there's uh, we have had you know in in our in our work so far, both in uh, just with the professional interviews as well as, um, with some people on the app that are associated, I'll get into this more, associated with professional interviews, and then some of the beta testing that, that we've started uh, for some of the features that we have. Um, we have had people say, hey, I would want to make some of this public. And so while our idea is, you know, this is pretty much going to be private, maybe at some point, you know, we'll give the option to people right now that's not there. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. Another question. This might seem like a little basic question, but what is the timeline for release? So I know it's a beta tester right now. What does the timeline look like to actually release it? And then kind of a follow-up thing, you mentioned some of the additional features that you're planning to roll out. What one of those look like? What are you guys planning for? So um well, what I want is right away. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be that. <laughs> um yeah, so it's a, it's a little hard for me to answer because and right now what we're doing, if you go to the website, you'll see that, you know, we ask you to, you know, please sign up for our wait list, which is the beta uh, as, as essentially the beta user. Um, we're going to, we are going to, as we, as we get people to start using it, of course, what happens is that, you know, people get confused at this point in, in, uh, in using this feature. Okay, well, we don't want to expand beta at that point. We want to, you know, get something particularly confusing, we're going to fix it before we bring on other people. Um, and so this process is very iterative, so we're going to continue to do that. Um, the target is is uh, within a few months, we want to be have it publicly available in GA. I, I don't know if we're going to make that or not. Uh, and that's because we just we, we want to have enough people using the beta uh, and gather enough data and gather enough feedback and act on that feedback and and solve the problems that people have that are, um, you know, we, we, we want them to be happy with it and use it basically, right? So we want to make sure that it's a good, good enough product to use. So um, what are some of the friction points you're seeing with your current beta users? So what are like the general thoughts of the problem that you're seeing about the product? Oh, um, it's all experience based right now. So, I mean, the, the thing I just said, actually, I get confused at this step. So, okay, we have to change something there. A good portion of it is just, um, and, and what, we're, what we're testing is specifically, uh, there's a specific flow, and I'm thinking like, like what we're doing right now is a specific flow that we're testing. Um, and that's from someone signing up to having their relative report this, uh, you know their their answer to this question, and then what happens right after that, um, and so a lot of it is is I would say experience. We're not have there's no technical issues, and maybe that's yeah, really one thing about this, the product itself or yeah. um, the experience is not the specific but how you did one, but mm -hmm. more the challenges that might exist in telling the story or getting them to talk about what they want to do. Or I don't know. Yeah, a, a lot. A lot of it right now is is trying to make it uh, not confuse people and and make it as easy as possible. So video uh, is a lot more challenging than anything else. We talked about story work. I mean that that's really easy. Someone almost everyone knows how to use email. Type an email back. That's the response. Um, audio would be a lot easier. Uh, video is 
is a lot more difficult. Um, and so making it as easy as possible for uh, Brenda, you said your your mom was ninety two. Yeah. So and her sisters all those ninety seven. Ninety seven. So in, imagine imagine a parent of yours trying to do this right, trying to use an app to record themselves. <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to make it stupid simple. That is that is the primary thing we're working on right now. I'm visualizing lots of shots of ceilings. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was my base yeah. that conversation. <laughs> 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 Whoa, <laughs> yeah, when I when I visited my mom, she's like, how do I get rid of these 42 pictures of my knees? How do I get rid of my <laughs> I like the idea of actually having like, let's say for example, I've had a very boring life. It would be great if you could actually capture one of these with somebody more interesting and then deep fake myself. It'll be a completely fictional for you. We're not planning to get into deep fakes yet. <laughs> um, okay, so. What, let me move on. Some of the things we're touching on are actually uh, in here in pieces as well. So let me go through kind of our journey. Hopefully this will be interesting to you. And then uh, and then we can continue, you know, if there's any more questions or, or, or comments or you want to talk about deepfakes and how scary that actually is. Um, all right. So This was the question I was trying to answer before we started the novella. Do I actually want to do this? All right. Um, so, so just so you know, like I said, a lot of you have a good portion of you have more experience than me as an entrepreneur. This is my first time. Uh, I worked at startups, but I was, you know, that was a lot earlier in my career. Um, I was not the a founder or an executive or anything like that. Um, what I did know about startups is that most of them survive. Uh, it's really, really difficult to, to obtain funding. And the ones that do succeed have a really difficult time. They go through hard, hard times. Um, so we spent a lot of time figuring that out. And um, of course, uh, one thing I did, which I found really valuable was I talked to friends and then friends of friends who had done this and who had both succeeded and failed um, and talked to them and got their advice. Um, uh, one of them, actually one of the ones that succeeded, his only piece of advice to me was uh, don't start a company because uh, <laughs> he had had a pretty hard time in his last company. Um, but despite all that, we still, uh, me and my co-founders, I don't want to talk for, for them, but uh, I I felt a strong desire still to do this. And, and the combo for me was my love for family, love for my kids, of course, um, my intense curiosity to know people. Maybe that's part of the reason I was interested in history. I, I like hearing people's stories, um, love for people, want to serve uh, and help people, and then utilizing my skills for a greater good. So I've had a lot of great roles and uh, jobs, and I've been happy with them, but none of them scratched the itch for what I felt like was more meaningful work. Um, so that was the question we were answering at that point. And then when we started the company, that was another question to answer, and basically every stage of the company, it seems like. There's a question we have to answer. Um, so Q4 2021 was was when we first really got into um, doing this, and and um, we didn't know what our products were, right? So we knew that we wanted to help families build deeper connections, um, but we weren't shit, we weren't sure yet how to do that, even though we had some ideas. And so we decided we had a lot to learn, uh, and so we did two things during that period. One was we started building the basics in our app, so. It's going to be a private app, uh, so we knew we had to have, people would have to log in. They'd have to be able to sign up. There's some basic stuff, you know. There, we we were working on architecture and design as well. Um, and so we started uh, building those basics. And at and at the same, and we also um, one of the first hurdles we hit in starting our professional interview service was the first thing that we were working on in, in the app because we found no other way to do this, which was to help families collect the questions to ask in an interview. Um, now we started our professional interview service, which, and, and by the way, all of us are technology people, the three co-founders, we're all from a technology background. 
one of us has some video production experience. So that's that obviously was helpful. Uh, but so it's not typical to jump into a non tech kind of thing right away, I think, when someone does a startup. But we knew that we could get in front of customers and potential customers right away. Like we, we started this like, you know, in a week once we decided we're going to do this, right? First person we interviewed was my dad. And uh, we subjected our family to a lot of trial and error for us to figure out how to do this. Um, but this also gave us some early app usage on our app. And the app only existed to support the interview service at that time. It wasn't useful by itself outside of that. Um, but we were still able to get people on there and learn a bunch of stuff about how they use it. So um, we also learned, one of the things we learned was to answer that question up there, we also learned that uh, people did like the idea of this. They, love, they want a product like this, there's value in it. Um, so we were convinced that there was a market here. So the next question then to ask was, okay, is there a market? We were convinced that there is, but that's a hypothesis. Um, one of the early investors we talked to, um, one of his questions, which has just stuck with me forever, he said, Eric, I love this thing. This is a great idea. I love it. But how is it a business? How is it a business, right? So we have to answer that question. We didn't know if it was gonna, could be a business. We believed it, but we didn't know. So we continued to work on the app during this time while we experimented with that professional interview service we, and we started charging for that service, right? Previously, it was just testing, uh, but we got confident enough in what we were doing and we saw enough interest to start charging for it. Um, so, that nine month or so period, we did we did a pretty good amount of interviews during that period. Uh, we learned an awful lot. Uh, and we added uh, some users to our app as well that was still in support of that professional interview service. And we learned from that as well. Um, we learned who our target market was. That's good. So meaning that we learned who's gonna actually purchase this type of thing. Um, and uh, we had a much better idea of handle on how our customers would use it, use the app itself. Uh, I'll give you an example, like, and I had never thought about this, but uh, one day, you know, because we're with customers physically, we can see stuff, right? You see them using the app. And uh, one, uh, one person was, just couldn't type on his phone because he had arthritis. And I never thought about that before as a potential problem, right? And so, so when I was mentioning earlier about making it easy and, and simple to use, that's one of the things that I was, of course, thinking about um, in that. Um, so anyway, so that that was, uh, oh, and then we also, at the same time, we also raised a bit of capital. So it's the first time we were we were trying to fundraising and, and get some money. So we had, we had some money to play with after that. Uh, and then the next question was, okay, now will people find value in that mobile product? Um, so in Q4 of last year, I did a lot of coding and, uh, getting back into it after a lot of years, I'm, I'm not the primary, uh, technology guy it, among us, but, uh, in that, in that time period, like the most important thing that we decided to do was we have to get some of the app features done. What I'm talking about when being you know, able to record with that app, we just have to get that stuff done. We're not moving fast enough with that. And so we all jumped in to do that. We spent some of that money, of course, to help with that or to get me help with other things so that I could do more coding. Um, so we wrapped up app development and, and we got to the point where we started uh, in a very early beta with a handful of people uh, on that app to record it. And I'll also mention that partnering professional interview service with the recording we found very powerful. So imagine um, we do an interview. It's kind of a one-time thing. And as soon as we're done, someone says, I forgot to say something. Oh, darn it. And then someone else says, oh, that's interesting. They, you asked them that question in the interview and I like their answer. Now I have another question for them. So, but we don't have the app part of it. We only can schedule another interview at that point, which of course is expensive proposition for someone. Anyway, am I okay on time? Yeah. I actually got one more slide, I think. Oh yeah, this is it. 
Um, my last slide. So these are a few things that we've learned and I've learned in particular uh, through doing this so far. Not an exhaustive list. Some are probably really obvious, um, but mentioning them because I think that they're important, deserve attention. Um, the, one, the I'd say maybe the most important thing I learned uh, in doing this is focus on what matters. So every single day, and this was hard early on, like you can just do anything as, as a startup. You're not joining a company that in a defined role that has kind of a, you know, a defined way of doing things. It's just completely open, right? Uh, and so you have to ruthlessly prioritize your time. So every day I'm asking myself, literally every day, every time I decide to do something, I'm saying, is this the most important thing I can be doing right now? Uh, because if I choose too many times, the not most important thing, our company could end up failing, right? Uh, you only have so much runway to uh, to choose the not most important thing to work on. Um, and so when I mentioned uh, how we did a lot of I did a lot of coding last uh, last quarter, um, we essentially decided at the end of Q3 we're going to put zero effort into promoting the professional interview service, and because we just have to get these features done because the combination of things these things will be powerful. And by the way, we are a technology company in the end. So um, focus on what matters. Uh, it's all about learning. Uh, had to learn incredible amounts. Um, things go really fast, got to learn fast. And this is not only in just what I have to do in my, in my work, but also on the product. Um, everything now we do, every, every time we're going to add a feature, we're asking, what are we going to learn from this? Every time you do an interview, we ask, what are we going to learn from this? Um, that is especially, especially important when you're in an, uh, an area, in an industry, building an app that really doesn't exist today. As I said, the things that are closest to us, they're all startups. Um, they're all at the seed stage as well. One just raised $5 million. I just heard about this two weeks ago. Uh, and a previous one in September raised three. I think both of you guys are about a year ahead of us. So it seems like it's uh, picking up. Um, all right, do things that don't scale. Um, the most important thing that I've learned, and I'm going back to that professional interview example, we do a lot of things manually that, that we know that we could automate and lower the cost, right? So, but we're doing it manually because we, we're still in that learning mode. We're trying to figure things out. Um, and it's not time yet to automate those things. Uh, and that goes back to the focus. Focus on what's the most important thing now. And so far, the most important thing has not been to to automate those things. Uh, ask for help. So I've never asked for as much help in my whole life, I think. Um, I've asked friends, friends of friends, strangers sometimes. A uh, guy I just met that uh, has, is a classmate, his father's a classmate of my one of my kids. Um, fortunately, I'm really likable, so people like to help me. And our company is also really likable, so <laughs> people are pretty willing. Um, as a as a early stage startup, you need investors. You need you need help with beta. You need specialized advice sometimes, and you don't have nearly enough money to pay for everything, right? Um, talk to everyone about your idea or company. Uh, at first, I wasn't sure if I should do that, and I learned yes, yes, that's a good idea. You learn a lot when you do that, uh, and you find a lot more help when you do that. Uh, and you get referred to people that can help when you do that. Um, of course, you also get sometimes opinions that you, you don't need, but that's fine. Um, there's a lot of benefit to it. Um, appreciate unfamiliar business functions. This was really important for me. Um, I did not appreciate some things just because I had not experienced them before, right? So uh, sales is a good example. I um, Sales to me was always the guys that went and sold something and then I had to deliver on as, as an engineering team uh, very quickly. Uh, and um, so anyway, so <laughs> I learned through this uh, that sales is a lot deeper and is, is, is very important. Uh, marketing is, is, has been probably the biggest, you know, we've, that's in terms of what I've done 
I have I underappreciated that too much early on. And so I think it costs us time to, to find help for that and get that right. And none of the founders had a background in marketing. So um, for a product like ours, that's pretty important. I think we, we have that more covered now, but like I said, there were mis mistakes made through that. Um, and then finally, uh, there's no one to save you. So yeah, so, you know, if things fail, it's, it's, it's on you. If there's a problem, it's, it's on you. Um, and uh, of course I knew that as obvious, right? Going in, but experiencing it is a different, uh, is a different story. So those are some things I've learned um, in doing this. Hopefully that was useful. Thank you. Are there more questions, comments? Have any samples you can share? Samples? Like a, a video? Yeah, I, yeah, actually I do. Um, <laughs> you know, I have one in my pitch deck and some of this comes from the pitch deck, some of it doesn't, by the way, obviously. But uh, yeah, I have a video that I use sometimes in the pitch deck. So yeah, I'd have to dig it up, but yeah, I can show that. So one, one thing that occurred to me right away is privacy concerns. I mean, I'm not, I kind of know there's some privacy laws out there. We have teeth in them now, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of people out there that are scared to death that they share stuff online, even in a public system, that something out there is going to hack into and it's going to be so that. Do you have that pushback and how do you be able to do it? Um, we have had ask, we've had people ask about that. Um, I, you know, kind of jokingly sometimes said, yeah, don't confess to a crime in the middle of you. People do know that, look, when, when someone, what we've learned when someone does an interview, they're, they do try to put on their best face, right? So um, we have had situations where uh, people have talked about hard times. But they don't know. No one has. I think most people will kind of self filter some of the, the most difficult things. Um, yeah, so most people are, and given that, I, you know, we really haven't had, we haven't had anyone say, I'm not going to do this because, because of privacy. They do ask about, you know, who's going to be able to see this. And of course, you know, it's on our platform, it's, it's secure. We have a lot of experience in. Uh, making things secure so in, in uh, tech, so yeah. Um, one other question: sure. What about pricing? How do you, how do you price the? I, mean, I know the professional videos were kind of pricey. Is the app what was the price point for the super? What do you expect to be able to charge? So um, we, we don't have that exactly yet, but we we. We do think so. We have reason to believe that uh, we'll be able to do a subscription, and we think that, uh, especially if this is, so if you look at story work, mm -hmm. similar to story work, uh, people find a lot of value in in gifting that, and we think a similar model would work there. But after that, of course, uh, with the subscription, so we do think that people will. We, we have evidence to show that people would would pay a, a small subscription fee every year for for something for access to this. Um, and then, on, and actually I'll just mention, I'll just add to that, that we see the, the, the professional service, the professional interview service, and there's a couple of flavors of that. Um, we think that those will really help to make the subscription more sticky. So people record sensitive stuff, you build a relationship with them, because someone from your team is gonna interact with them. And, and we, we have reason to believe that they'll be more likely to Stick with the subscription once all that is on the platform. Are you is there a franchising model with this? I mean, if it's one thing to do it in one region and you know yeah. I mean the standards, but if you're trying to roll this out coast to coast, how are you going to put together a production team? Yeah, so um you know that's an interesting question. So it depends. We, we definitely, okay, so the, the one thing that we know is we know that we are able to hire a videographer to do this. Uh, and the videographers exist in every city in, in the US. Um, so I don't know if that's a franchise more or more like a, you know, almost like an Uber or something, maybe that's going too far, but something similar to that uh, would be the model. Um, we think what we would, what we're going to, what we still have yet to explore is 
Can this be done? I mean, the phones are getting so good now. Can this be done at a lower price point with someone that has some basic training um, with the phone, passes a background test or background check and all that stuff, of course, too. But, uh, yeah, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, I, I, I think the answer is <laughs> no, not franchising yet, but you're exploring the options of yeah. how to roll that out, how to yeah. scale a professional video service exactly. to the standards that you need so that you get consistency from city to city and mouth to mouth, because that's going to be what yeah. really drives a lot of this is the happy family that's now got people everywhere else. And if mm -hmm. there's one bad interviewer for uh, Jewel, the you know Uncle Fred had a great time. Her experience was bad because they were in different cities, and that can yeah. put a kibosh on the whole development of the program. We we definitely think we can put a system to this. So we I don't know if it's a franchise or not, but yeah, you can you can get it to the point where you can have a process, a pretty very a very standard process to do this, and you would only need the the labor there to actually go and record. You don't need it for any editing. Uh, you don't need it on the front end for you know, figuring out what to uh, interview on or anything like that either. Because your editing is all centralized. We can centralize that, yeah. Yes. So uh, the, your platform, is it a, a paid, like an Amazon bucket or some kind of uh, cloud-based server, or is it um, a rack in somebody's house? <laughs> Where are we at with that? No, 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 no. It, it, there's... Yeah, it doesn't make sense to uh, to try to do server in your house or co-location yeah. anymore or anything like that. Uh, yeah, we're 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 pretty in AWS. So I guess. I guess my question is like a lot of a lot of these types of services are moving to, especially when you're talking about NFTs and all of that, they're moving to IPFS because the concern is okay, I get all my stuff on there and then my subscription lapses or like. How do I ensure that I can have continued access to my own content? I mean, have, have you guys talked about how you're going to approach that, or is that like a down the road question? It some um, yeah, the actual deciding and figuring out the full details yeah, that's down the road. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we've we've decided that people record stuff on there; it is their content, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so we would have to have a mechanism. To get them that content, they decided to make a change. Some kind of escrow, yeah. or something or other, probably. Oh gosh, yeah, I haven't thought about that one, but yeah. yeah. I mean, if we that would be if we like go out of business or something, and they yeah. can still get access to that. I mean, like with the NFTs and a lot of these kinds mm -hmm. of blockchain based art projects, it's mm -hmm. it's a real thing that happens yeah. a lot. And I mean, obviously, you're a little uh, more stable, I think, than a lot of these projects have been. I guess my other question is, uh, I, you know, I just came from CES and I saw some products that were using AI to create digital twins of people that could live on after they pass, which really brings all my creepy buttons. You know, like pushes all my creepy buttons. So I'm wondering, you know, it leads me, it leads me to think that, you know, like as a culture, we're kind of weirded out about that. Mm -hmm. And how are you planning to approach some of those? thresholds definitely down the road questions uh -huh. yeah where are we're aware of that but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is is <laughs> we're not at the point where we're going to trade yeah. avatars of people yeah. at this point yeah, yeah. you approach your loved one and you say you know we really like you know our children and our children's children to see you after you're dead but do you mind doing this for us yeah quickly but bring you don't have to bring, yeah. bring it up <laughs> Yes. Right. Oh, whoever. Uh, well, now I can ask any question. Uh, probably yes. the simplest. The probably the simplest one to ask is, what's your exit? What do you What are you trying to create? And where are you trying to become the next Facebook? Are you the exit of Facebook? Or what? And then what's the core? And the second part of that is, what do you think will be the core part of the business that will impede that exit? Mm -hmm. um so i i don't want to have the reputation like facebook so that, that's not uh that's not what we want to be um yeah so you, you could imagine uh it depends on i think the company and it depends on the um 
<clears throat> where we go with the technology, right? So, so right now, like an, an obvious company that you would think would fit well with this type of thing would be an ancestry.com, right? So they're they're in this space, um, you know. So they do everyone knows ancestry, right? They do DNA and they also do like uh, genealogy. So through they have enormous databases of historical records, government records, uh, and all that. And something like this to me would be a pretty good fit in that. Um, you could imagine if if we go in some other direction and there's some technology involved that uh, would be interesting to a big tech company, uh, then that it might go that way as well. But right from what we know now, I think it would be more of an ancestry. It would be uh, our business matches with uh, that type of business. And I'll ask the third one. Sure. The third part of that would be what, and I'm always asked this uh, when I'm doing any type of entrepreneurial effort, in as few words as possible, what is the problem that's actually being solved? Um, I think I know the answer already. <laughs> Please say it again. Sure, it, it goes, I would go back to that story about my mom, losing someone um, and having people, other people that you love or even future generations be able to, to know them. Not, not just remember them, not just know about them, but know and even experience them. That's ultimately what we wanna solve. Um, I'll tell you that uh, when I mentioned that we've had multiple people essentially passed before we were able to, to do that professional interview with them. That, that's not a coincidence. That happens because um, the people that pop up and contact us are uh, doing it because like someone just went to the hospital and now they realize, oh, I might actually lose this person. There's a sense of, uh, there's a realization of a sense of loss or potential loss. I think, I think what I've seen or at least uh, the fact that we've all seen this stuff and I know I'm going through that with my dad right over the last couple of years. So with my dad, who's now maybe 90, he's not sick or anything, but he's now wanting to tell his story and make sure that everybody understands who he was. Yes. Well, you, you asked when you talk about uh, getting to know someone as opposed to just telling a particular story or group of stories. Um, how many stories do you think it would take to quantify or to at least get a flavor of who that person was, as opposed to just uh, you know, this is what I did when I was five, this is what I did when I was eight, mm -hmm. things of that nature. So how many, how many hours or how many you know, uh, variables do you have to cover to, to get a flavor of that person? Um, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. We know it's a lot. Uh, actually, I, I do have some data on that because there is a, is a competitor that uh, has figured that out or has, uh, has a number that they target to do something similar. Um, that, that company is a little different. They're, they're very focused on the technology of, uh, they do, um, if you've like, I don't know if you've been at the Holocaust Museum, but they, there's these 3D um, avatars mm -hmm. telling stories that that's what they do. Um, so there's a number of data points that they collect in order to create that, uh, those. Um, other than that, I'm not, you know, we would really have to discover that as we go along, as we de develop the technology, as we scale. I think scaling in particular and having a lot of data uh, to um, be able to learn from is, is pretty critical to figure that out. You know, a lot of the time we spend is pretty mundane. Yeah. It doesn't really, doesn't really define who you are or like simplify who you are. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's picking out those, those, those points that, that, that we keep putting the piece together, we would actually get an idea as to who that person was. Yeah, exactly. Eventually, like, like I mentioned, we, we have to get to the point where we can identify what is missing. Um, and we're going to be able to do that based on the other data that we have, right? Uh, and so, and that will allow us to get, being able to do that will allow us to get that 360 degree view, I guess, of a person and who they are. Um, yeah. All right. Question? Just a comment. Okay. I, I like your women's page, uh, the aerospace and defense. I saw a lot of feedback. I think it's a great thing to do. Um, my, as a retired person, however, one thing that jumped out at me was uh, you mentioned your technology company and a lot of technology in this room, but none of your clients do. Okay. So you mentioned marketing. Uh, your clients are 
their income bank is either theirs because they want to leave it to somebody or mom and dad who are pretty close to the, you know, checking out time is, is kind of late. So no matter what, there are, there are your clients with the legacy who mean you gotta hide as much of this technology as possible because that will not sell. That will that will uh, yeah that's what we are totally agree. Online, online question too. Um so the other questions you ask random or do they have a particular focus or format that turns this process into an interesting informative story? And you kind of touched on what I think, but yeah, yeah. So, is there a method to your madness or just pure madness? <laughs> <laughs> There's at, at the very at this moment, there there is a basic method, right? Uh, and so the goal is to make that smarter, that process smarter and smarter to the point where we can suggest people relevant questions for their family uh, and for the person based on what we know about them, based on what we know about a lot of essentially other questions that are being asked out there. Um so we also just when I mentioned we also do some do some things that don't scale manually. We've learned a bunch of stuff from interviewing. Uh, and so when families go in and they they select questions and they create their own, sometimes they yeah, they miss things that are uh, part of uh, that we know that are things that we want to capture. And so those things we uh, also I imagine if we had a lot of data to base our decisions on, those things would bubble up to the top as things that. Hey, you always should ask something around this. As a history major, are there prompts that you have pulled together for somehow integrating social influences from someone's life? You know, it's like, okay, everybody gets all the sense of what, where, where were you? Where were you when John Kennedy died? I mean, those kinds of questions that we have for major, major yeah. events, but for something more locally, Regionalized? Is there some way to to figure out? I mean, my my great aunt had a scrapbook of the Johnstown flood. It was like mm -hmm. significant in, in her world as a young woman, and uh, those things that that I otherwise would not have known about. So. Yeah, so that's definitely on the roadmap. Not yeah. yet, but um, that re that requires a few things before we're able to do that. I, I was going to say one more thing that also the questions that we have a lot mm -hmm. of them were created by essentially experts that interview as well. So, um, and so they, we haven't just made them all up, essentially. Okay. <clears throat> I'm, I'm curious about your view of your equity mark. And, and you know, if, if the founders are writing code, you don't have to raise money to do yourself and you still get paid. But as soon as you start taking money from outside, they can have a say in where you're going and how fast you're going. You don't have to answer this question about the, the cash out if, if you don't want to, if you control all ownership. But as soon as you start taking money from others, you, you need to worry about that. And, and the arc that you see in terms of when you're taking how much money from who, is that going to put you in a position where you can successfully compete against the company that got three million in and the company that got five million in? Yeah, I mean, we thought and talked a lot about that. I think that um, the, the, the path we're on is similar to those other companies, right? I, I, and I think in order to move as quickly, quickly as we need to, um, we, we just will need more help than, and more expertise than, than what we have just among us. So, yeah, so I, I think we're going to be on a similar arc, even though we have a lot of the technology uh, um, ability. We, don't have everything we need and we don't have, you know, in the end, we're going to need more, uh, more help to, to get there, right? More bandwidth, I guess is what I mean there. So what, what, what amount of money are you looking for next? Where are you going to get it from? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to start. We actually took a little hiatus from pitching uh, and that I was, when I was writing code as well, we're, we're going back to that. Um, and uh, we're going to start uh, talking to investors again, and uh, we have we have a list already that we're going to be working down and trying to get in front of. Um, how much is uh, I have I have a pretty good idea, but I don't want to say that you know we don't have the exact amount yet that that we're going to be asking for. It I don't think it's going to be as big as the other guys yet. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, you can ask for any questions to the inbox. So, um, yeah, just so you normally go to eight o'clock and give you a chance to but relax. Tron, Tron has a question on the time that we addressed yet. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned being particularly focused on what you chose to do individually. Similarly, how do you decide as a team what features are MVP <laughs> <laughs> the most uh -huh. valuable? One? How do you balance? Failing fast and learning with the runway. Thanks, Tron. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if I, yeah, so I got a minute, maybe a minute to answer this. Yeah, right. um, so this is the first time I'm in a, in a relationship with others like this too. I feel like this is a little bit of a marriage, right? Yeah. Uh, you fight a lot sometimes, you have disagreements, but you have to figure that out and, and move on. Um, and so, um, yeah, so, so we, we decide we have, one of us is kind of the product guy. Um, we all give input. Um, we give input on the technology. I, I'll give input, my input. Um, but ultimately, most of the time, <laughs> we will agree. And then sometimes we'll decide how are we going to resolve this. Um, it's, it's, it's not easy. I'll say that. It, it's not easy. Families never are. <laughs> and in terms of failing fast, yeah, we, we're constant, like I said, we're constantly learning and testing everything we do. We say, okay, how is this feature? What are we going to learn from doing this? Um, and so we don't do, we don't do any three month long projects. There's nothing like that. Everything is, is small. Uh, and so, and part of that is, you know, we're going to be able to learn the next thing and maybe we made a mistake and we got to switch. Um, anyway. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.